Kirsty TV is about the power of sharing stories that heal ourselves and heal others. My guests share their most intimate stories and lessons learned along the way. My guest today, Laurie Burns, grew up in turmoil and an extremely physically abusive home. By her teenage years, she had found herself spiralling down a road of drugs and dangerous behaviour. By 19, she was working the streets as a prostitute and addicted to heroin. Now, 27 years sober, she's completely turned her life around and is here to share her story with us. So tell me how you decided on the title for your book, Punished for Purpose. Punished for purpose, as you know, best represents my life. Because as a child, I thought God was punishing me for something I did in a past life. He must hate me. But as an adult, where I stand now, it looks like a blessed life. Yeah. So as a child, it was punishment. And now, of course, it's my purpose. It's everything. I would do it all again. Which is an amazing thing to say, because right. I've been in sobbing tears this week mm -hmm. reading through that book. I mean, starting at three, the abuse... Mm -hmm ending up in psych wards, prostitution, heroin, you name mm. it, you've been through it. Right. And to say that it's a blessed life and you do it all again, you wouldn't have said that 20, 30 years ago. No, no, no. So I like to think of our healing as like a massive jigsaw puzzle right. with each piece. If you had to pick a key piece to your healing, what do you think it was? Gosh, there's so much to pick from. A key piece to my, oh, well, that's easy. A key piece to my healing was, of course, the healing of the relationship with my father. To learn that my father, you know, we look at our parents like what we see on TV. They're supposed to take care of us. They're supposed to love us. They're supposed to protect us. And what happened? I must not be worthy of it. Mm -hmm. But to realize that your parents are humans that may have been a child at one point that was never helped. Yeah. And if they were a child that was never helped, they're going to grow into a broken adult. And it has not, little or nothing to do with you. Which I think you weren't the there. Yeah, because I think a lot there. of us internalize everything's about right. us. And mm -hmm. it really wasn't ever mm -hmm. about you not being lovable or good enough right. or being bad. But that's what the abuse made you feel yeah. about yourself. Yeah. I love that quote in the book about your dad when you mm -hmm. got to the place of forgiveness when you said, the most powerful kind of love is that which is undeserved. Right. Healing that is deserved puts a small bit of healing in both of your hearts. But healing that is undeserved is like throwing a pebble into a still lake. It just, the ripple effects of all the people that will hear the story and be touched by it and investigate their own life and their own heart just goes on forever. So how is the relationship now with your dad? I mean, this is someone that you feared, loathed, were mm -hmm. so broken down by, and in a lot of ways was the catalyst for where your life went. Well, you know, in the end, of my story and just a couple of years ago I was speaking on a cruise line and answered the phone to my dad being in a mental institution after trying to kill himself. So when my dad tried to take his own life they called me. So when the man called me and told me my dad tried to kill himself and I got my dad on the phone and he said, um, how dare you love me? How dare you forgive me for what I did to you? I don't deserve to live. I deserve to die. I said, Dad, do you realize it's because of every day of my life, every place I've been and every person that's been in my life that I live this beautiful, amazing life today? And if you weren't my dad, I wouldn't have the beautiful life I have. So I forgive you, Dad, but you really need to forgive yourself. It's been 20 years. I am so blessed and so grateful for everything in my life, including you, Dad. And he cried like a baby and I picked him up. So here's a man that put me in the mental institution when I was 13 and had me tied to a bed in a straitjacket. And I get to, God's grace, I get to pick this man up from the airport and accept mm. him into my life. What would you say to 15, 16 year old Laurie? Oh my goodness. What can I say to 15, 16 year old Laurie? I mean, I was so guarded. At 15, I was unapproachable, unfortunately. It took what it took to get me where I am right now. And it might, as drastic as it may have been, and that's why I named my book Punish for Purpose, yeah. it might have been that final punishment with the gunmen in the woods that I, it should have been the last day of my life when you read about that night. And I lived that night. I was ready to die. I was ready to go. I was screaming, kill me. It's over. It's done. I'm ready. And this, they'd been brutally raping you for hours. Right. Yeah. 
And the gun was to my head several times, and I knew, I, this is it, Lori. These are your people. You're all on the same team. They've got a loaded gun. You want to die? Let's do it. And I'm screaming, kill me. And it should have been the darkest day of my life. And the end was actually the beginning. And I think there are no mistakes in this life. And the hardest thing that I had to process was, could you forgive those men? Right? Wow. That did that to you? And the answer is yes. I could forgive those men. Because I know in that forgiveness would be healing that none of us would be able to explain. Mm. It would be a miracle beyond miracles. Because we know what we know now, which is those men were broken. Mm. Something really bad happened to those men to bring them to a point to take an innocent girl off the street and want to kill her that night. But I think you're right. I think we have you know, epidemic proportions of rape and trafficking. And it's one thing to save the girls, but there's another man buying another girl the next minute. And it Mm. really comes down to how are we going to heal the men that are doing these crimes? Right. And hurt people hurt people. That's right. Do you love yourself now? Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. What's so amazing about the life that you have now and who you are that you love? First of all, it was totally unexpected, right? I never thought I would see 18. I never thought I would see 21. I was on a death path. And what's so amazing is that I wake up every morning happy. After reading your book, I am amazed you are here, honestly. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It really is amazing. Right. And you're doing so many great things in the world. Thank you. I got the opportunity to tell my story in prison. I love that. I feel the greatest healing in the darkest places because it's the people that are in that darkness oh, that I can you. You're feel just like full coming of out. Quotes. Yeah. I feel it's, the greatest healing in the darkest places. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. I mean, walk yeah. into Skid Row at night. Walk into a prison. I did a bat mitzvah for two Jewish girls that got life in prison who had killed people. Mm. And I got to speak to them about what happened. So I know I talk about God a lot. I'm talking about God, religion, Jewish. Um, And it's all over the place. Am I religious? No, not at all. But I do know there's something external to us that's running things, beautiful things, beautiful instances that happen all the time. And as you know from reading my book, uh, when they told me I needed to believe in something like a god, I was petrified because on the heels of my bat mitzvah, I'm tied to a bed in a straitjacket in a mental institution. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, what kind of god is this? So I had to rely on something else. And they told me I could believe in anything. So I had seen a movie about God with George Burns. So I spent most of my sobriety praying to George Burns. And because it wasn't me, it worked, you know? So I'm at this conference, and it's the kind of conference where it's like a self-motivational work through your stuff. Yeah. And they're talking about forgiveness. Now, I'm sitting in the audience going, well, I've already forgiven everyone. They've got nothing to say. And then all of a sudden it hits me, and I go up to the mic, and I'm like, okay, this may not make sense to anyone else. But the person that I hope forgives me is God. Because my whole childhood I thought he was punishing me. And I had no idea that he loved me this much. And day after day I wrote letters to him how much I hated him for bringing me into this world. And now I live this beautiful life and I've never actually said I'm sorry to God. So I made my amends that day. And that was a turning point for me. Mm. I'd forgiven my dad. I'd forgiven myself. I'd forgiven all those bad people. Yeah. But my very existence was still hanging on. Yeah. And now you believe every day that you're worth being here and yeah. that I was supposed that to be a purpose. Here. What's the best part about your new life? Everything's great about my new life. I mean, I just, you can't, I guess it's my kids. Mm. It's my own daughter, Summer, and the amazing woman that she's become. Unbelievable. And then all of the kids that have come into my life, whether they were foster kids or homeless children, just everyone's their own bright light that I can't do without, Mm. right? So people say, you know, you're an angel, you help all these kids. And I'm like, if you only knew how much I get from the kids, Mm. you would see. It's not really giving, it's more getting. Do you think that's what keeps you sober? It's a little selfish, right? Sober. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's a good uh, thing. Do you think that's what keeps you on the straight and narrow? Well, I'm very involved in my sobriety and I speak a lot all over the world to addicts and alcoholics. So that 
I think telling of my story is kind of cathartic and I can walk through it again and I, it's like a renewal of where I'm at right now. And it's also the kids because I get to see myself in their lives. Thank you so much for Thank being you. here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if you, like Laurie, have been through some kind of trauma, whether it's childhood abuse, prostitution, heroin addiction, I think that the most important thing is to realize that you can come out of the depths of despair and darkness. You can find a way to plug back in and be reconnected with yourself and start your path to healing. But one of the most important things is being able to share your secrets and speak your truth and find a way to forgive those who have hurt you and forgive yourself. I hope that we'll see you next time on Kirsty TV. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel below, tweet us and Facebook us, and we'll hear from you soon. 47 kids later now. Yes. Is that right? Well, 30 in my home. I'd say total probably closer to 60 now. Yep. And then I just opened a 100 bed facility. So like I said, the floodgates are open. If we add all that up, we're probably going to be at 160 by the end of the day.